the concept of eternal life pervades all human thought, certainly most religions. But what will it be like in your physics-dominated future? In the far future, what, we will, what will happen to us is we will be brought back into existence, resurrected as a computer simulation. Now that's what it looks like from the outside, talking about it as a physics physicist. But what does it look like from the inside? Well, the answer is, it looks like just like what we're seeing around us today. Everyone is familiar with the experience because I think most people have seen the movie The Matrix, that when the people were in their virtual reality, they could not distinguish between the reality they were experiencing and the reality as it was outside of the simulation. But in the far future, the simulation will be far better than it was in the movie The Matrix. It will literally be indistinguishable at the quantum mechanical level from the reality we now face. But will I have personality of a course continuance? It would, definitely. Will I have a sense of myself? Because in order to quantum mechanically duplicate me, it's, a, it's going to take a very large number of, of bits of information. It certainly will. Vast amounts of information will re be required to reproduce you. Um, a human being is very complex. We could not do this. The movie The Matrix is technically unfeasible with technology which sure. we will have over the next sure. few centuries. But we're not talking about a few centuries. We're talking billions trillions of years. billions of years of technological advance right. and vastly more power. So with that huge amounts of power, a simulation in which we are duplicated as a computer emulation down to the quantum state becomes possible. Which means there has to be infinite numbers of me all similar to... Not infinite numbers, almost. just large, large, large by our standards. Yes. 10 to the 10 to the 78th copies of you would have to be made. Okay. And that's just for me at this instant, and I, yes. I keep changing instant to that's instant true. over my You'll lifetime. Even, even more than that. So what we can do is we can quantify how much use over how many uh, lifetimes, what your entire lifetime is experienced, and we can still get a finite number. And will I have a conscious identity of course it would, with, with it every would, one of these guys? No, you will be unaware of them unless you ask your recreators, the beings of the far future, to allow you to communicate with the other versions of yourself. That is technically feasible. <laughs> and as a computer emulation. It will be far more interesting a life as, as a computer emulation as it now is. Because remember, they will re reproduce as a computer emulation, not just you, not just your immediate environment, but the entire visible universe in which you are now existing. Vastly more computer power is necessary to do that, but in the far future, trivial amounts of computer power by their total standards will be required to do this. Well, well if this occurs and we're and it, there, I'm going to give you an apology for doubting you. But I have to tell you, this is, this is beyond my ability to, uh, uh, to accept. It's not beyond mine because I accept the physical laws, and the physical laws says this will, will, will indeed will happen. I believe in the physical laws. Well, you tell me what kind of an apology you want, because if I see you there, you're going to get it. Thank you, Robert, but it won't be necessary. I'll just tell you, let's enjoy life, Robert. <laughs> this unlimited now life. We can go over, over, over everything in the visible universe. I will never walk on the surface of Mars. We will never have uh, spaceships that will take us there in my lifetime. But in the simulated universe, Mars will be there. I'll go there. And what about the planets around the nearby stars? What about the planets of this entire galaxy? Wouldn't it be wonderful to visit them all? But, but, but wait, we'll but, be but able to. You, you would do that, but you'd also be able to create worlds that are never existed. That's true. And there's also, no difference between the two. You can create all worlds that are allowed by physical law. So all logical possibilities. Consistent with physical law. There may be more possibilities, um, logical possibilities, than are consistent with physical law. Fine, but there'll be no distinction between things that were actualized or real and things that were possible consistent with physical law at that time according to your structure. According to my structure, though. There's no difference. According, there is no difference, and there is no difference in reality now, because quantum mechanics tells us that reality is not this single universe, but a multiverse in which all 
entities, all universes consistent with physical law, really do exist now. We, however, because of the physical constraints on us now, cannot visit them. We're not even aware of these other universes, obviously. But when we're resurrected, we can now access them. We can now go to those other universes, which we are totally unaware of, and see what they're like. Okay. You could, for example, have a visit. You could interview an alternative version of yourself and see what his life was like. Most interesting experience, taking advice from yourself, from an alternate version of yourself. Obviously, we can't do it now, but in the far future, we will be able to do it. I'd like to see a dinosaur. I'd like to see them in reality rather than seeing them on a movie th so, screen. Some people think one of me is one too many. I disagree with that. I think that uh, you have been a very interesting <laughs> questioner, allowing me to express the full implications of physical law.